Welcome to Electron Online. So here we have the integral of 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus a squared. And the temptation may be to think, oh, look here, I have an x squared inside the radical. The differential will be 2x dx. I have an x and a dx in here, but the problem is the x is in the denominator, not in the numerator, so we cannot use that technique. We have to resort to the trigonometric identities and to the trigonometric um, what we call substitution. We're going to use this format of the triangle because we have an x squared minus a squared so we're going to have the hypotenuse is x, the adjacent side to the angle is a, and the opposite side is x squared minus a squared which means that the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse and the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. We can solve for x, and x now becomes a times the secant of theta. And if we take the differential or the derivative of that, we have dx over d theta equals a tangent of theta times the secant of theta, which is a derivative of a secant of theta. So now we're ready to substitute for x, for dx, and for the square root of x squared minus a squared. And you'll be surprised that you end up with something actually quite simple when we do that. So this is equal to the integral of, we have a dx in the numerator, so that becomes a tangent of theta secant of theta times d theta, when we move the d theta over to the other side, divided by x in the denominator, which is a secant of theta, and the square root of x squared minus a squared can be written as a times the tangent of theta. Now when we take a look at it, a pleasant surprise. First of all, we have an a and an a that cancels out. We have a secant of theta, secant of theta cancels out, and a tangent and a tangent. And all we have left is 1 over a times d theta. So this becomes equal to 1 over a times the integral of d theta. So notice how easy the integral has become. The integral of that, of course, is theta. So this becomes 1 over a times theta time plus a constant of integration. And then we have to substitute back in what theta is equal to in terms of x. So coming back over here, we realize that x equals a secant of theta, which means that the secant of theta is equal to x divided by a, and therefore theta is equal to the inverse secant of the ratio of x over a. So we can now substitute, which means that this becomes equal to 1 over a times the inverse secant of the ratio of x over a plus a constant of integration. And there we have it. That's how we find the integral of 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus a squared. So not so bad once we do trick substitution.